Hi, this lesson is going to focus on discrete random variables. Um, now discrete, the definition of discrete is opposite to the definition of continuous. Discrete means that we've got some countable um, possible values. So in this case, we've got the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. Classic example is a dice. Okay, so these could obviously be the outcomes on a dice. Excuse my artwork. There we go. So we've got like one, two. Okay, I know they're not really placed in that that order but there we go okay so it could be that we've got one to six and then there's we've got actually got the probabilities of each one as well so here we can see we've got 0 0.3 probability or 30 percent chance of getting a one um 0 0.1 chance of getting a six so it doesn't look like it's uh, it's de definitely not a fair dice in this case um quite crucially as well all of these probabilities should add up to one and they do okay so this is just a nice example of how discrete random variables and their related probabilities can be presented. Um, now then, let's have a look at this random variable x, which represents the number of heads when three coins are tossed. So you can imagine this happening. There's your three coins, okay? And we can get to various different outcomes that come up. Um, we might get three heads, okay? So that can happen. We might get a head, um, a head and a tail. Um, so going on the theme of one tail, we might have head, tail, head. We might have tail, head, head. Uh, we might have two tails, so we might have tail, tail, head. We might have tail, head, tail. We might have head, tail, tail. And finally, we might have tail, tail, tail. So there should be, yeah, there's eight different outcomes that we could possibly have in that scenario. So let's just label that. There's the outcomes. Okay. Now, X represents the number of heads when three coins are tossed. So we're going to actually draw out now the probability distribution for that particular discrete random variable X, okay? Now we can have three heads happen. We can have two heads happen. We can have one head happen. And we can also, in the case of tail, 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 we can have zero heads, okay? Now here we've got the probability that X equals X. In fact, that should be that there, x, um, and it's curly x, should I say, small x. And now the probability of getting three heads, so that's one in eight. Um, so assume that these are fair coins, of course. Um, how many of these outcomes have two heads in them? Um, so we've got one, two, three of those, so three eighths. Um, how many of them have one head? Three of them, three eighths. And how, of them, how many of them have zero heads? Well, that's just the tail, 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 so that's one eighth. So here we go, there's the probability distribution for that particular random variable x, of which the mini values, you know, the values that it can take are small x. Sorry, that should be the curly x. So the probability that the number of heads equals x are these, and they do add up to eight eighths, don't they? One plus three plus three plus one is eight. Eight eighths equals one. All right. Now, here's how a question might be presented in an exam. So we have a discrete random variable x with the probability function. The probability that x equals x is k1 minus x all squared and 0 if, um, so that's for x is minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And 0 is the probability if we've got x values otherwise. Okay. So what that really means is, and that's what I prefer to do, excuse my wonky table, but I do like to do a table to show this. So I've got my x values that are given to me. So I've got minus one, I've got zero, I've got one, and I've got two. Now there's no chance of any other x values happening, okay, because it says the probability of any other ones is zero otherwise. So here we've got the probability that we have that particular x value. Um, now, how would we work these out? We work them out using this formula. So if x is equal to negative 1, we can see that the probability that x equals negative 1 is equal to k brackets 1 minus negative 1 all squared. Okay, now 1 subtract negative 1 I know is 2, so it's 2 squared times k. So this is actually going to be equal to 4k. All right, so we know that. If we have x equal to zero now, let's investigate what happens here. So the probability that my x value is zero is going to be k, let's substitute zero in here. As when I see, wherever I see an x, it's going to turn into a zero. So it's one minus zero all squared. 
which is one squared. So one squared is one. So it's just K. All right. If I have, keep going with this, if I have one going in, okay, one minus one is zero. Zero squared is still zero. Zero multiplied by K is still zero. Okay. So I can see that the probability that X is zero would be basically zero. And if I can just squeeze in the last one, I've got two going in. So the probability that X is equal to two, how am I going to be able to squeeze this in? It's going to be K times one minus two, all squared. And um, one minus two is minus one, minus one all squared is one. So that's equal to K, so yeah, okay. Now then, uh, my next job is, in this question, show that K is equal to one over six. Now I've already said that the, the sum of all of these probabilities is always equal to one, okay? They should all add up to one because they're the only X values that we're taking. And obviously the probability of one is certainty, isn't it? So we're certain we're gonna get one of them. Now, what I can see here is therefore that 4K, if I add them up, so the sum of all these probabilities, 4K plus K plus zero plus K must be equal to one therefore. And if I, if I simplify this left-hand side, I've got 4K, 5k, 6k, so 6k equals 1. I can see where I'm going here. k must be equal to 1 over 6 as required. Okay. I hope that's clear. All right, let's have a look at another one. Um, now, this could be your turn. So if you want to have a go, feel free to pause the video and have a, have a go. All right, I'll be going through it now. So it says, the random variable x has a probability function kx. Okay, so let's draw it out. So it's giving me my small x values. Um, so it's telling me I've got one, two, three, and four, like so. Um, it's saying probability that my discrete random variable is a particular value of x is kx. So k times one is k. Two times k is two k. Three if I put three in here as x, k, three k, and four k. All right, now my job, just like before, is to show that k is equal to one tenth in this case, not one sixth. Well, again, we know that all of these should add up to one. So therefore, if the problem, if the, excuse my sigma sign there, sorry. <laughs> not much better, let's try again. Sigma, probability of x equals x is gonna be equal to k plus 2k plus 3k plus 4k. And we know that they should add up to one. Let's add up how many k's we've got on this side. So we've got seven, eight, nine, 10. Ah, it's working out, isn't it? Okay, so now, now I know that k must be equal to one tenth, as required. And I can be very smug in writing as required here. Okay, last one. Now this looks a bit more like the one I did just before that last example. And um, so I'm given the probability distribution, how to work out the probabilities for certain X values. So I know I'm looking at the X values, one, two, three, and four in this one. So I'm gonna draw my table. I always draw a table in these questions. And um, so I've got certain X values. I've got one, two, three, and four. And my probability of each one Okay, let's look at first of all one and three. Now that's just 1k and 3k, isn't it? So k and 3k. And if I actually look at two and four, I've got a slightly different expression to substitute into. So two goes in here, two minus one is one, one k, so that would give me k. And four goes in here, four subtract one times k is 3k. All right, um, now it says I need to construct a table given the probability distribution of X. Well, I've done that actually, almost. And, well, part A, let's look at part A, find the value of K. I know that all of these will add up to one. So K plus K plus three K plus three K equals one. How many Ks have I got this side? We've got six, seven, eight, I've got eight K equals one. So K is equal to an eighth. I guess what they want me to do now in part B is to improve upon this um, probability distribution because now I actually do know the value of k. So I'm going to rewrite it out, trying to be as neat as I can, <laughs> one, two, three, and four. I know that k is equal to eight, one eighth, so 
the probability of these is going to be one eighth and one eighth. And then here it's going to be three times one eighth, which is three eighths, three eighths and three eighths. And that's part B done. Okay. All right. So I hope that that's been nice and clear. These questions are a lot easier than they look, aren't they? Um, I hope that's been good. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. Please comment if you enjoyed it. Um, 